On this episode, Christian hopes you've been listening. Well, you better watch out because I am about to blow your mind. Because he always finds the right words. Uh, is, uh, 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 And when in doubt, he just quotes Star Wars. It's working! Hmm. Hi everybody, this is Christian, this is Lazy Lives Academy, the advanced schmuck tutorial, you know what it is. Um, so, last episode, we were in the thick of it, we were creating a system that allows us to use our sprites more efficiently. And that system is already kind of like working. We already made the first steps. It's cool, it's cool, I like it. Um, but we now, today, we want to expand the system a little bit. And you can already see that there's a problem like the center, the center sprite doesn't quite work the way we intended it because it's kind of like a different type of mirroring, right? We had a system here um, that allows us to draw a whole sprite completely flipped. But now we want to be able to just draw half of a sprite and then make the system draw a second sprite next to it. That's what we want to do. And then later on we maybe want to add more, more things. And of course, we are very worried about tokens. This is you know this library that just contains five sprites it takes us a whopping 40 tokens. We definitely want to find some kind of split solution, some kind of way to collapse those tokens down again. First of all, let us start with the mirroring of the thing, right? So we introduced like this seventh entry in our sprite library that uh, if that's set to one, it flips the entire sprite. Um, we can do that here, obviously, but that's, again, that's not what we're looking for, right? This, okay, this is the second half of the sprite, but now we want to kind of like draw this twice, once mirrored and once not mirrored. Now, there's multiple ways of doing this, but I think we're going to use this so often. Uh, I think it's, it's good to just have set it to like, to, to, for it to be like a dedicated effect that we can apply to sprites. Uh, so I'm going to set it to, like when the seventh entry is set to two, I want, I, I want to tell my program, I want to tell my sprite function that, you know, this sprite is just the left half and you go ahead and draw the second half, you right? So, um, let us do this. And right now when we run this, nothing happens because we expect the seventh entry to be seven. Um, but now we're gonna expand this. So this is a bit of a jank, but you know, bear with me. So if ms7, if that's equals two, then, in this case, we already drew the first sprite. So we're just gonna draw that sprite again, but this time it's gonna be mirrored. This here is going to be true. It's going to be just mirrored, right? Ah, but that's not quite what we want. We want, of course, it not just be mirrored, but also move to the side a little bit. And this is kind of like where we have to like make decisions. I'm going to just say, I'm going to just say it out, outright, that um, whenever we, def we do this effect, um, the sprite that we have is always, always going to be the left side of the sprite. Um, so we have to do the copy, you know, move to the right. We have to move move to the right when we draw the copy. Um, so let us do this right right here. So here is where we where we have the X position of the copy. This is the X position of the copy. This is the X position of the original. So here we just need to add the width, and that's going to be ms. Uh, entry one is X position. Entry two is Y position. Entry three is width. So like this. Bam! Ah, uh, yeah. Is, uh, 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 it just works. It's just it's it's we're we're back we're back in business, baby. We're back in business. It just works. Oh, so beautiful. But is it? Is it so beautiful? I don't know if it's so beautiful because you see. By the way, if I'm moving left. No, uh, that's okay. See the, the red red pixel is not quite at the same spot, uh, mirrored, uh, when you're moving to the left and right. But again, that's because the pixel is not exactly in the center of the sprite. It's 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 the two by two rectangle of sprites that is actually the center. You know, I think that's that's the problem here. Let me let me draw the other pixels as well. 
this is going to be the cluster of the pixels that is the center. Right, this is the, cent the actual center of the sprite. And now we get, uh, now the left side and the right side looks perfectly mirrored. Okay. Let us remove this red pixel for now and let us just think about, see this is, this doesn't look quite like the sprite that we had initially. We had like the sprite where the cockpit, where the cockpit thing was, was like this uh, asymmetrical thing, right? Um, and the same thing with left side and right side, by the way. This left banking animation, that didn't quite look the same, right? It's, it's not just mirrored. You see how, uh, if this is the bottom of the ship, then the reflection is at the bottom side of the ship. And on the other side, the reflection is opposite of the bottom side of the ship. So the reflection kind of like always stays um, the, this, uh, this white, Specular light always stays in the up top, top left corner uh, and we want to replicate this effect. How are we going to do this? Well, you better watch out because I am about to blow your mind. A nice system we have here, right? And we, and we have a nice system. What if we make this system tremendously powerful? And we do it by allowing multiple sprites to be drawn with just one sprite. Here is my thinking. So this is spread number one, two, three, four, five. Here in this middle spread, we're gonna fix that middle spread. We're gonna add another entry here and we're gonna write down six. That's gonna be the next sprite that is supposed to be drawn after the sprite number three is being drawn. So whenever we draw this middle sprite in the sprite number three, afterwards, that sprite function will recursively, that's a fancy word, recursively draw the next sprite on top of that. And the next sprite is now gonna be like a fixed sprite, a sprite that we draw just to fix that reflection in the canopy. So uh, real quick, um, I'm just gonna create a, like a fake sprite here, like a, it's just so we can just see something. I just wanna create something, right? Uh, let me create uh, something that will be highly visible. Uh, let's just create something like, like this square here, just like a little square, right? And then let us say the square is 49, zero, right? So it's 49, zero, and the width was four, four, and we need anything else? Oh yeah, the offset, zero, zero, whatever. Um, like this, okay? And now in our tools, in our tools thing, we're gonna do something like, if ms8, if there is uh, something in the eighth entry in our sprite library, which was again, like the next sprite idea, then we're just gonna call this function with call itself. That is what we call recursive thing, where a function calls itself. It, cr it creates like little, don't talk to me and my son, every, it creates like little child function and, and uses kind of like, uh, uses uh, the same functionality that itself contains, so to speak. Um, so in this case, we want to draw uh, this next sprite and we're just gonna draw it at the X and Y position. And of course, we can now layer this. Now, the next sprite could also draw another sprite and another sprite and another sprite. You could draw a whole bunch of sprites if they're chained um, with each other in this, in this library. And it costs us nothing. It, that's, that's the only thing that we need really for this. And then obviously the data. But like in terms of code, this is like very, very efficient. Let's run this. You can see now we, we draw our, our square where it's supposed to be. Now, things would get a bit trickier when we kind of have to find out how to exactly fix, how to exactly fix that reflection. Let me, let me think about this real quick. So what we want to do, like what we actually have is something like this and like this. So we have to like, <laughs> we have to flex, like find the right, the right sprites, right? It's, it looks like this. This is the reflection that we have. And let us now search for the reflection that we want. This is the reflection that we want, something like this. 
Uh -huh. Copy and paste. This is the reflection that we want, right? In other words, we just like need to like this little, <laughs> this tiny little sprite. <laughs> I know it's a bit crazy, uh, but I think it's 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 you know these little details kind of like do make a difference. So we need to find like a combination of these kind of sprites and see we can also apply the mirroring effects, right? It's just like the, you don't have to just like find exactly those pixels. So for example, we can just take here or, or like from here the pixels, right? So it's let's go like seven five. Um, so it's gonna be seven five. The width is two and this width is two, okay? So let us run this. Now you see the little cluster of pixels down there, but it's not at the right position. And how do you position this sprite compared to the other sprite? using the offset. So we're just gonna use these things to move the sprite, this little fix thing, cluster of pixels. We're gonna move this up to exactly where it needs to be in order to fix the reflection. Um, so let's just move it like, uh, I think it needs to be moved one and like five. Uh, that's too, too high. Let's just go three. And now it's not one, but minus one. Almost, almost. Uh, minus two. I think we're, we're there. Are we there? Oh, right, right. We need to mirror it. We need to mirror it. So comma one, so it's mirrored. And I think it's minus one now. Eh, eh, it's working. It's working. Yes, yes, yes. Now you can clearly see now, especially now that you know the center sprite looks really nice and like it transitions into the sideways uh, sprite, so really nice. You can clearly see how going to the right, you know the you can see that the reflection jumps, jumps to the other side of the of the of the of the jet. It just like looks a bit janky. To the left, banking to the left looks nice. Banking to the right looks looks janky. It looks like the reflection is moving around, which is fine. Reflections move around, but like that just doesn't seem right. Um, so yeah, we can add a fix to the other side of the canopy as well. Uh, let me figure out what kind of fix we want. And you can already see, like, again, it's cool that we have the system. It's a bit unwieldy, right? It's just like we have to, maybe there's a different way. Maybe there's a better way. Is there a better way? All right, just copying this out. I'm gonna paste this in. And something you can do is, I'm just dealing with a canopy right now. I'm gonna flip it around, right? So this is the canopy that we have. And this is the canopy that we want. Again, same, same principle. What we want, what we have. Copy. Error. Always change the wrong tab. And this is the canopy that we want. Right? Um, so what needs to change? Well, now we need, to, we need to change a whole lot. We need to change like this whole bunch, right? We need to change this whole bunch. Well, we can just mirror it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can just sample the same pixels that we're drawing and just mirror them. So we can just like take this, maybe actually, I'm wondering, no, no, we cannot reuse this. Okay, so let us go here, five, five. This is the starting pixel. So five, five, the width is gonna be three pixels, the height is gonna be two. And then we'll be drawing the mirrored version of our spaceship, of our jet. We're gonna draw the fixed sprite for that. It's gonna be sprite number seven. This is sprite number seven. So comma seven, comma seven here. Let's run this. Now this doesn't work. It's the, the sprite appears, let me, let me fix this a little bit. I'm gonna be moving things. I don't want to actually um, okay, so let us just not move the ship so we can see the animation better. And you can see how there, the fixed spread is there. It's not quite the, same, the right width, what's, what's wrong? It's not supposed to be mirrored. I think the fixed spread, uh, uh, I'm not sure why. Oh no, it's there. It's right there in the top, top left corner. Um, yeah, okay. So we just need to move it uh, to the left once. So it's something like this, zero. 
yeah, I see. Now the reflection stays where it, where it was previously. Now we have a really nice animation. Now something I want to do now is I want to fix that middle frame, which is kind of difficult to see. So I'm going to just modify the animation real quick. I'm going to make it so that it doesn't go all the way to the fifth sprite. I'm going to make it so that it stays at the fourth sprite. So we can see, oh no, it's just, this, this looks good. This is fine. And accidentally this was, this was the right value. Okay. So you can see we have a nice and smooth animation and we have a tremendously powerful system that will allow us to draw, to construct sprites out of, out of smaller sprites. This is exactly what we need. Because imagine we have later on, we have like a big enemy, for example, like a big boss enemy. And maybe it has like little flaps that open or something and guns come out, right? Usually you would have to, if you wanted to animate a big sprite like this, you would have to duplicate that sprite. But now we have a system that allows us to just like take a sprite and then draw little details on that sprite and animate them perhaps. And then we can just create multiple entries in our sprite array that contain a big base sprite. Uh, and then maybe little changes about little flaps opening or something like this, right? We are able to construct sprites, big sprites, animated sprites out of smaller sprites. And we can even apply effects to them like mirroring and some other stuff. Maybe we have some other ideas in the future. Isn't that great? Okay, so let us now, when we are, while we're here, let us fix some of the problems that we had, like the jets are in the wrong place. So let us fix that for, for a second. So uh, where are the jets? There's the flames. See, now it's no longer PX plus six. Um, I think it's just something like plus seven. Let's try plus seven on the Y position. Uh, man, I don't remember how it was before. Um, but let's go like plus one and minus one. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Because the flames themselves obviously are uh, have like the center of the flames in top left corner. So actually we need to probably convert all of our convert all of our sprites into this new system. Maybe we should do that, huh? Because the numbers we're getting here are still a bit weird and wonky. Yeah, this is this looks good now. Yeah, like we probably cannot fix the positioning until we transitioned all of our, our sprite data that we have so far into the new system. And we kind of want to do that. All right, so let's let's just let's just do it. Let's just convert all of our sprites that we have or our ship sprites into this new system. This was just like testing stuff. We can remove this. Do, 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 do. Now, here's the thing. You, uh, our shots, right? Our, about our shots. I'm a bit worried about our shots. We have these shot sprites and they're great. I love them. Uh, but I am a bit worried. Uh, we could use the mirroring effect to make them, to collapse them even further. But I'm worried that this will result in like two draw statements whenever we draw a, a shot. And I'm worried that this will this will be a bit inefficient. So I don't know. But on the other hand, we, we know, we know that um, drawing smaller sprites is actually quite efficient. So maybe it's gonna be fine. You know what, Let's, it's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do it, whatever. Half the sprite. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it YOLO. All right, so let me try to get those um, the data in our database for these things. So these are going to be 38, um, 38, 0. All right, so this is all the data for the shots, for the actual shots that we're firing. Uh, copied over into into our database. I haven't fixed the offset yet. I'm gonna to have to figure out the offset in a second, but for now I want the shooting, uh, when we're shooting the shots, I want to be actually using this data. So this is one, two, three, four, five. See, already, already, I don't I don't like this. We need, we need some kind of tool for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So eight, nine, ten is the, the shot animation. Um, where is it? 
where is the shot animation? Um, oh, we don't. Oh, we don't have it here. I think we we have it here when we're shooting the things. Um, so, so eight, nine, ten, right? Uh, gameplay. Yeah, it's it's here. Uh, eight, nine. 10. Maybe we're gonna create a variable for that. How about that? Huh? So we're gonna do something like um, shot r split. Uh, we're gonna fix this later on. We're gonna we're gonna create a more smarter system for for this later on. For now, I just want to have a system. And see, even even with a with a even with a short array like this, it's, I think it's, it's worth it because it's like what? Um, this whole thing is three tokens, but if we, if we spell this out like this, uh, this is four tokens. So even if we have just three entries in an array, it's still worth it to do a split on them because it will still s save a whole token, which is crazy. Uh, okay, so we have the shot R here. And then we have here, we can do the shot R in here. And now we can also do the same thing with a muzzle animation. Muzz R. This is just a little bit of a, um, and yeah, we're gonna fix again. We're gonna fix those those later. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So now we are putting the right array into our um, into our animation uh, into our bullet thing. Uh, but now I want to where, where are we drawing the bullets? Where are we drawing them? Um, mm -mm -mm, there we go. Here we where are we drawing shots? And now I want to change this to. Um, yeah, not SPR, but we can just call it MSPR. And it's everything else just drops right in, right? Um, we don't actually need the shot. We actually, it's actually simpler now. <laughs> it's actually simpler now. We don't need the shot height because that's all information stored in our sprite database. So we just don't need SH anymore. And we don't need SH anymore here. That's good. Let's run this. That's not what we want. Yeah, 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 I made a mistake. Um, it's, uh, we don't want to just mirror the thing, we're just gonna wanna duplicate and mirror it. So like this, yes? Yes, but you see now it's kind of like, weird, looks weird, right? It's, it's, it's just like, it seems like it's not, something is janky about this. They don't look like they looked before. And that is because of the offset thing. I already talked about it a little bit, so. Um, let us just quickly turn in our ship. Let's quickly turn in our ship into into the eight, nine, ten, ten, ten. Uh, something like this. So we are we are now a shot. Let us do not draw the muzzle flash uh, for now. Uh, the not the muzzle flash. The the flames in the back. I don't want the flames for now. So you see how when the animation, I can now kind of like basic step through the animation. You can see how the animation is like, it's it's all bound to the left edge. Um, that's because we haven't defined the offset and we have to make, make sure that the offset is right. Uh, first of all, I want to bring back the dot. Where did I do that? that there's, there's where I do that. All right, so the center of the dot is at the top. And you can see how kind of like the, the, the point of the arrow is going away from the center of the dot, right? Well, let us, let us fix this real quick. So let us make it so that um, this offset is gonna be one, two, three. And I think that will solve the problem, let's see. It didn't solve the problem at all. <laughs> is it three, two, one? Yeah, that, that's correct. You see, now we are changing the offset of the, of the uh, of each sprite so that the top point of the arrow stays at the same place relative to the other frames of the animation.
so this should this should also make the shots look look good. Yeah, the shots look fine now. They're offset to the side a little bit. We have to fix the alignment of the everything, but but yeah, that's 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 what it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's do the same procedure with the muzzle flash. All right, so I have the. Um, the muzzle flash is carried over, again, always the half of the muzzle flash. Now, something I did here, I wrote, I, I put down some pink, um, pink stuff on the bottom here, and it's because, you know, the muzzle flash is black on black, the background is black, but also the background of the entire sprite sheet is also black. And uh, there might be, at some point, we might some put some other stuff there in this pink area that is not muzzle flash, right? So um, now when I'm trying to figure out the sizes of the different muzzle flash frames, I want to make sure that uh, I do not accidentally grab some of that, that pink area, um, because if it was black, it would be just transparent and I wouldn't see it. If it's pink, I will see it in the program. I will see it when I draw it to the screen. So if it's pink, I screwed up. Um, right, so let us start putting the data into our my sprite array. Oh, by the way, here in the sprite, my sprite area, I want to start actually writing some comments so I know which entry is what, because I, I just can't see just numbers, right? And again, another reason for why we probably gonna need, uh, in the long run, we're gonna need a tool for this. All right, so this is in the data that we have. I'm gonna type, type muzz for muzzle flash. Um, this, so this is the animation. Um, so shot, this was 10, right? And this is nine, and this is eight. So this would be 11, 12, 13, 14, all right? Uh, and so the muzzle area is 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, yeah, let's let's try that. Let's let's just try that. 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm gonna repeat the 14. And by the way, when we drawing the muzzle flashes, this here. Um, where is it? Where is it? There is. Where we go. Um, we want to use MSPR now. Uh, and we don't need these anymore. Cool. So let's run this. Oh, oh, we, we might have we get X, Y with offset. Well, the offset is, we, let's reset the offset to zero. Um, but it's correct, this should be two. Oh, wait, 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 do we wanna, don't want to reset all of the offset. We don't want to reset the offset of the shots. Yikes. This genuine, genuine confusion. Oh, right, 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 right. I forgot to use the, actually apply the muzzle, muzzle, muzz R. I forgot to put it in the, in the actual animation of the Mara muzzles. <laughs> Let's just do it real quick, like this, and then run it. All right. So we can see how, again, uh, the offset is, is all wrong. We need to fix that offset. So um, yeah, let's just do it real quick. So I think the X offset is always just the width of the sprite. So we can just do it like eight, seven, six, five, like this. Yeah, almost, almost. Uh, it's always low and less. So four, five, six, seven. Yep. And now you can see how it like the muzzle flash goes up. That means the vertical offset is, is not quite right. Um, in fact, I want now the center of the muzzle flash to be kind of like where the muzzle flash actually appears, you know, the, the origin of the muzzle flash. So that would be, that makes more sense to me. Hmm, not quite what I lo was looking for. Uh, why? Ah. Yes, this is good. So it's again, one less than the height of each sprite. That should be it. Mm. 
Yeah, that seems like the right, the right animation. Okay, so now let us take this and um, yeah, we can actually, you should see it, right? Ooh, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's a bit flickery. It's a bit flickery, but, uh, but we're, gonna, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna fix this. Uh, let, let us fix the alignment of everything. I'm gonna comment this debugging stuff out here. Uh, we don't need that old ship area anymore. So we have the ship and now we want to make the, see the, 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 the actually the alignment of the, of the muzzle flash is actually almost correct now. We just need to move it a little bit down. Yeah, it's minus four plus four, that's good. Just moving it down a little bit. So it's like minus seven. So something like this, a bit further down, six. Maybe even further down, maybe maybe down to five, because now we have these outlines. I kind of, yeah, I think this is this is looking correct. Does it? Is, does it look correct? Let's just go. Let's just go even further down. Let's just go even down to six. Ah. Even further down, seven. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, five. Down is, is less. Yeah, maybe even, even four. Yeah, why, why not? Um, putting them, the muzzle flashes further down allows us to make the shots appear further down. Yeah, I think this is good. Yeah, I think I think this is this is this is the one that I like. Okay, so I settled at minus four um, as for the height. Actually, wait. Why do I have it twice? Yeah, that seems good. That seems good to me. Okay, so now let's make sure that the shots are also um, there where they're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, this should be like minus four and four now, right? This should be pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh, let's, let me draw the shots. Yeah. Uh, I want to spawn the shots a bit higher now because uh, the origin is... No, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I would definitely want to spawn them higher, but I'm not exactly sure where. Let's go minus 10. You see how they're, they're, the shots are now behind, uh, behind the muzzle flash, so that's why I want to spawn them even higher. 13. 14 maybe even. I think, I think I still saw a flash, yeah, now it looks correct. All right, yeah, and you know, just like little tweaks like this. Okay, so let us now do the same last procedure with um, with this little these little jets. Yeah, something like this. I, um, I decided not to mirror them this time around because here's the thing, they do have a center. They do have a center pixel row and we don't have, like the way we set up our mirroring system is that it kind of like always expects the number of pixels for the final sprite to be even and not odd, like in this case. So we would have to write some more code to be able to mirror sprites that have a center column. We can pull this off and we might add it later on, but for now I'm just like, the sprites are so tiny, the savings are gonna be minuscule, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm putting it on the right side of the sprite sheet because frankly, I did it already before and that worked before. So I'm just gonna replicate you know, the decisions I had previously. There is a good chance that in the end, when you know when we start filling up the sprite sheet we're going to have to do a lot of puzzle tetris stuff you know to make sure that all the different sprites go into the different positions again once more a good reason for maybe to have like a tool so we can redefine the sprites very quickly we're going to get to that when we get to get to that first i want to see the flames Okay, I think this is it. I think this is the, the one. So 15, 16, 17 is gonna be flame R. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 16, right? And then we're drawing the flame that's here. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're gonna be used our MSPR, MSPR. Uh, like so. Let's try that. Uh, we forgot the comma, I think. Yeah, there is go. There's a comma that we forgot.
Yeah, that's good. And now the the placement of the uh, of the of the flames is not quite correct. So let us do something like minus four and plus four. Is that is that is that how easy it is? Yeah, almost, but uh, it's not quite. So minus three and plus two, something like this. Uh, plus one. Oh no, uh, minus two. Minus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the right right place. But I think they need to be a bit higher. Uh, actually, no. The, I think that's I think that's how we had it previously. Yeah, I think that's how we had it. Okay, that's good. Now let us bring back this ability to move around. That would be kind of nice, huh? And we can actually remove all this stuff. This is old. This is old thinking. Uh, this is also old. Um, I'm gonna keep it around the center thing. Um, and here, update function, I want to bring uh, back the ability to be able to move around because now I want to be able to fly. Nice, nice, nice. So let us do like a little uh, to-do list of, of the things that we want to do. Um, scroll teleport bug, definitely something that, that we have to look into. Uh, I also want to redo uh, the X, X scroll. Because now we, we have to go over that. It kind of works, but now it's like, you know, the center is not quite centered. We have to maybe do it correctly at some point. Uh, but the big to-do that we have to do now is, you see how just like this with the sprites that we already had, we are already 136 tokens just for the sprites that we already had. And it's going to be a lot of more sprites. So, um, yeah, uh, we need to find a way of doing the split better split for MSPR. And that is coming up in the next episode. And this is also gonna be part of the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Yes, 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 so the doggy zone, we have some stuff aligned in the future. We're probably gonna tackle some of those problems that we encountered here in the next episode. Mm, but something that is kind of like a big deal is kind of like developing a split function that allows us to deal with arrays that consists of arrays. It is possible to do this. I call this an, a 2D split because this is kind of like a one dimensional array and the 1D split. But now we need a split that works when an array is inside an array. I want to be able to take a string, run a function on it, and it will spit out that entire array of arrays. That's going to be the task for the doggy zone. For now, we're gonna move this section to the section where I always say big, big thank you and big, huge shout outs to the people who are supporting the show on coffee. And if you are not supporting this show on coffee yet, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazy devs. You get to see more episodes earlier than everybody else on YouTube. Check it out, coffee.com slash lazy devs. Another thing I also want to do in this uh, supporter corner is I want to give another shout out. I want to present another beautiful thing that uh, some of my supporters have sent me in. This one is by Potov. And there's a story here. Potov was apparently in a, in a hospital for like five months, which is a crazy amount to be in a hospital for. I hope Potov is fine. Are you okay, Potov? But Potov also used this uh, time to learn Pico 8. And they made an incredible shmup. You can check it out here. At, um, it's called Spaceoid. Uh, and it's like there is some really beautiful artwork here. For example, I really love in this shot how you can see like the planet in the background. That's something I, I talked about in a, in a tutorial and it's incredible to see it pulled off so nicely. I really love like the crescent here happening. Uh, also, this shmup is kind of like different from, from a typical shmup. It's more about avoiding obstacles and less about shooting down things. You need to check this out. This is um, The link for this is going to be down at doobly-doo. I'm going to also display it here. It's potoff.itch.io slash spaceoid. Yes, 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 everybody. So we have developed our beautiful system. We are converted. We have converted our existing sprite sheet to the new system. Um, we already see a need for a tool to deal with that. But before we go there, uh, we want to make sure that this new system, this beautiful new system is actually being, you know, compressed efficiently in terms of tokens. That's something that comes up in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.